We are beginning the week. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Today is Monday. Monday again. Monday already. January 30th, 2018. Huh? 2019. Oh, sorry. Is it the 29th only? Why do I get my dates wrong? That's right, it's only the 29th. <laughs> I'm already thinking about tomorrow. I hope I did. <laughs> okay, anyway, the Gospel is from uh, uh, St. Mark. Still, we're still reading St. Mark. Um, Chapter 5, verses 1 to 20. Okay, it's a very long gospel. So we're going to skip the reading of it, and I'll just tell it to you in a story. Okay? <laughs> so our Lord our Lord was walking with His disciples. And um, they were in the territory of uh, uh, Gerasenes. And anyway, they encountered a, a man who was possessed by an evil spirit. Possessed by the devil. But this kind of possessed man, this man, was very vicious. Okay? What do you mean by he, that? Uh, he was really evil. Okay? He was really evil. Um, and uh, the possession of the devil on him was so violent, so violent, that it made, it, it made him very violent. Okay? The devil took uh, total control. Total control of this man. Okay? And that uh, he was so he was so um, possessed by it that really he was like an animal or maybe worse, right? Very, very, very vicious uh, and bad that nobody could control him anymore. Okay? That in fact uh, they tried to chain him down. They tried to uh, confine him uh, in in the best way they could. Because he was harming people, he was harming things, destroying things. and But anyway, nobody could do that. Nobody could control him. And he was living in the, uh, in the tombs, okay? in the cemetery. And um, so he was just very, very bad, very bad. And uh, well, and he, Jesus encountered him. Okay? Jesus encountered him. And he was telling Jesus, you know, hey... Um, I know who you are, same thing. You know, the devil always knows who Jesus was. And um, he was telling Jesus, please do not torment me. Okay? Please do not, uh, don't, don't touch me. Don't cast me out of this, of this man that I have possessed. He was, he was begging Jesus um, not to be uh, cast out. And then Jesus asks him, who are you? What is your name? And then he says, we are legion. Legion means many. Many, many, many. Okay? So what does that mean? It means that this man was not possessed by only one demon. He was possessed by several demons. He was afflicted with um, several um, demonic um, powers. Okay? That he could not uh, get away from, that he was um, uh, uh, that he was uh, uh, really beholden to already, right? So this man was not anymore himself, okay? because uh, it was the devils uh, acting uh, in him and doing things with him. That's what that's what possession is all about—to be taken over okay? by by the devil in this sense. But Jesus, uh, you know, um, wanted to cure this man of his uh, possession. Uh, and, um, well, the devils themselves, the legion, told him, if you want to get rid of us, just send us to the herd of swine. Okay? So they, want, they transferred from, <coughs> from uh, excuse me, <coughs> from the man, they were occupying the uh, so-called occupying, possessing, the soul and the body of one man, okay? and he said, uh, "Just transfer us to the herd of swine that was feeding nearby." What okay? is swine? Swines are pigs. <clears throat> yeah. So that's what our Lord said. 
That's what our Lord commanded him, commanded them to do. He said, okay, go. And when they left the man, the entire herd of swine okay, that these devils possessed, next. Uh, well, they all ran wild. Right? And, and in their wild, uh, 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 you know, um, uh, uh, what do you call that, uh, behavior, they started running off uh, the cliff and down into uh, the sea where they all drowned. Okay? That was how many, that was how many, could you imagine, uh, possessed this single man. Okay? Now, and later on, later on, they, uh, so after that whole incident, uh, they encountered the same man in the streets again. And the disciples were saying, isn't that the guy? Wasn't that the possessed man that Jesus took the legion out of? And they saw him very calm, normal, and uh, composed, and, you know, uh, living a good, clean life. Okay? And then he wanted again to follow, uh, uh, to be after Jesus and follow Jesus. But then Jesus told him, well, go home. And announce to, I mean, tell your family what happened to you. But he was not content with just telling his family. Eh? Okay, he obeyed Jesus and told his family. But then more than that, he went out to proclaim to the rest of uh, his community and the rest of the world that uh, it was Jesus who cured him out of his possession. Okay. Now, what lessons can we learn out of this gospel? What lessons can we learn here out of this story of Jesus taking out the, the, the legion from this one possessed man? Well, I'll tell you what. There is nothing, there's no case, there's no problem too difficult for Jesus to solve, too difficult for Jesus to handle. Remember that everybody had a hard time already dealing with this man because of his possession, right? Until Jesus came about to take care of his problems for him, right? And he, uh, he cast out all of those devils from this man. So there is no problem, no difficulty, no struggle, no challenge that we encounter in our daily lives that is too difficult for Jesus to handle. Okay? Remember that. Remember that. Because sometimes we can lose hope. Okay? Sometimes we can get discouraged. And we think, I cannot get rid of this temptation. I always get tempted to be lazy at my school work. Or I always get so tempted to be distracted and looking at all sorts of things and imagining all sorts of things. And, uh, you know, whether it be something related to your school work, to your professional work, or to matters of purity, for example, or, um, or uh, the, the uncharitable thoughts that you might be uh, thinking other, uh, about other people. Whatever temptation besets you, whatever temptation haunts you, whatever evil inclinations we might have, all of these things are not impossible for Jesus to uh, help us in. Jesus can remove all of these obstacles in our way. Jesus can cure whatever our souls are afflicted with, no matter how big it seems to us, right? Because sometimes these, these uh, afflictions, um, we dramatize them. Sometimes they, they could only be little things really, but to us they seem big. But sometimes they can also be really big, right? Now, whether they are imagined uh, to be big or they're really big problems, there's nothing that's impossible for God not to resolve. So what should be our attitude when we are confronted by these seemingly difficult situations? Number one is, huh? what do we do? Yeah, we pray. Of course, we pray. We ask help from God, right? We ask help from Jesus. And number two, we should always trust. We should trust Jesus. Let's have faith that he in his in his time, 
in his own sweet time, in the time that he has uh, determined to be uh, the best time to help us resolve our difficulties, he will come to our aid and he will solve our problems. And number two, hope. Right? Number three, rather, to hope. We, we should not get discouraged. We should always keep that hope alive that our Lord is going to come to our aid, is going to help us. Okay? And number, number four, okay? besides hope, besides trusting God, besides praying, number four is we got to do our own bit of work too. Okay? Because our Lord only helps those who help themselves. Right? God helps those who help themselves. So we have to do a little bit of our work. We have to put the effort to try to help ourselves get rid of those difficult things that we encounter in our lives. Okay? So uh, just like this, just like this uh, possessed man, okay? he helped himself, so to speak, when, when, uh, when he requested our Lord, well, just send these devils to the swine, <laughs> please, right? He found a solution, <laughs> okay? So, okay, uh, they were thrown into the swine. And uh, that, uh, of course, that is not quite the way we, uh, we should ask help from our Lord, right? But uh, that, that was a solution, right? He helped himself, okay? He helped himself. So let us not, let's not forget that there is nothing so big, so great a challenge or an affliction that uh, Jesus cannot help us in or cannot solve. Okay? We have to trust in God. We have to be prayerful. We have to hope. Okay? And we have to do our uh, bit of, uh, uh, put our effort. And this is especially true when we are fighting some kind of supernatural challenge, supernatural difficulty. When we're faced with temptations, when we are faced with um, uh, um, difficulties in, in acquiring virtues okay, or in fighting vice. Those are the little devils that uh, can sometimes haunt us. Okay? And we can ask our Lord's help. And Our Lady, also, don't forget Our Lady, don't forget your guardian angel. Okay? So we have so many to ask help from. And that's what we need to do uh, in order to get rid of this little uh, devils that may haunt us in our own personal lives. Okay? Okay. 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 Well, that's it for us this morning, folks. Uh, we're going to be off to Mass now. I hope you have a good start of your week, everybody. We'll see each other more often this week, hopefully, barring any uh, unforeseen circumstances. And if Joseph wakes up on time every day, then we will see each other. Okay. Bye-bye. Have a good day. Bye-bye. <laughs>